today on Network Africa. Donald Trump wins fiercely contested U.S. presidential elections. Nigerian president joins other world leaders to congratulate Donald Trump. a look at the effects of a Trump presidency on Nigeria's social political landscape and the economy. Welcome to Network Africa. I am Amarachi Ubani. The United States of America today, or should I say between last night and today, spoke loudly in clear terms by electing Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States. And the President-elect won 289 Electoral College votes to defeat his opponent, Mrs. Hillary Clinton, a former Secretary of State, former First Lady Hillary Clinton, to 218 Electoral votes. In his acceptance speech, Donald Trump acknowledged the heart-fighting spirit of Mrs. Clinton, whom he says he has congratulated him and considered a victory. He promised to rebuild America, provide jobs for the teeming unemployed, and also work with even the opposition to make America great again. He says there will be a president for all of America. Thank you. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time, and we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans, Democrats, and Independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans, and this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. As I've said from the beginning, ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. It's a movement comprised of Americans from all races, religions, backgrounds, and beliefs who want and expect our government to serve the people and serve the people it will. Yeah. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. I've spent my entire life in business looking at the untapped potential in projects and in people all over the world. That is now what I want to do for our country. <laughs> tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American 
will have the opportunity to realize his or her fullest potential. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. We are going to fix our inner cities and rebuild our highways, bridges, tunnels, airports, schools, hospitals. We're going to rebuild our infrastructure, which will become, by the way, second to none. And we will put millions of our people to work as we rebuild it. We will also finally take care of our great veterans who've been so loyal, and I've gotten to know so many over this 18-month journey. The time I've spent with them during this campaign has been among my greatest honors. Our veterans are incredible people. We will embark upon a project of national growth and renewal. I will harness the creative talents of our people and we will call upon the best and brightest to leverage their tremendous talent for the benefit of all. It's going to happen. President-elect Donald Trump. Now, as expected, uh, congratulatory messages uh, do have to come in from leaders around the world. Uh, one person, all eyes were on for that congratulatory message did come, Vladimir Putin of Russia congratulating uh, Donald Trump, saying he is confident that the United States president-elect will build a constructive dialogue between Moscow and Washington. His message came via a telegram sent to Mr. Trump shortly after he was declared winner. Other world leaders, such as the European Union Commission uh, Chairman Jean-Claude Juncker and uh, the EU Foreign Policy Chief, as well as uh, President of France and the UK and other leaders around the world, also commending Donald Trump on his win. From congratulatory to fearful, world leaders and citizens in countries across the planet have expressed a wide range of opinions on the news that Donald Trump has been voted as U.S. next president-elect. In Moscow, President Vladimir Putin sending a congratulatory note saying he hopes they could get the U.S. and Russia relations out of crisis. As I have already said many times, it is not our fault that Russia-U.S. relations are in the state they are in now. But Russia is ready and wants to restore full-fledged relations with the United States. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull sent in a congratulatory message to the new U.S. President-elect. On behalf of the Australian government, I offer my congratulations to President-elect Donald Trump on his historic election victory of which he has just spoken moments ago in New York. Throughout his campaign, Trump pledged to take the U.S. on a more isolationist America first path. His position raised the possibility of damaging relationships with America's most trusted allies in Europe, Asia and the Middle East. Although Trump vowed to renegotiate the Iran nuclear deal, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif is calling for U.S. President-elect to stick to the international agreement and stay committed to the multilateral nuclear deals. As far as the Islamic Republic of Iran is concerned, since Iran and the United States haven't had political relations, what is important is that the future U.S. president-elect is obliged to stay committed to this not bilateral but multilateral nuclear deal. And in Berlin, where German Chancellor Angela Merkel's defense minister described the news as a huge shock. French President François Hollande also sent in his congratulatory messages, but warned that the results will open up a period of uncertainty. I congratulate him, as is natural between two democratic heads of state. I am thinking of Hillary Clinton, with whom I worked during the Obama presidency. This American election opens a period of uncertainty. I have to face it with a clear head and clarity. The presidency will be Trump's first elected office and remains to be seen how it will work with Americans and the rest of the world.
VOA's Steve Miller has been with us in the coverage of the elections. He joins us now from Washington. Steve, I'm glad you could join us again on Network Africa. This indeed has been a historic election. I'm just listening to the, uh, to the last part of that report, uh, my colleague there, uh, uh, saying that you know, this will be Trump's first elected uh, political office. I mean, really, what's the mood in America like today? Well, across the nation, there is a lot of surprise, a lot of shocked individuals, because all the polls clearly pointed to a Clinton victory, even though it was a very narrow margin, and Trump came in from the outside. However, throughout this entire campaign, if we go back to the primaries, both mm. the Democratic primaries and the Republican primaries, it was both Donald Trump on the Republican side and Bernie Sanders on the Democratic side that really galvanized a lot of people to come out. They they were viewed as outsiders. They were talking about how they viewed the system and how it needed to change. And on Tuesday, Election Day, a lot of people were looking at the process here in the United States, looking at the federal government, and decided that they needed a change. And they voted for Donald Trump. Now, during his acceptance speeches, Steve, we, we saw a more somber looking Donald Trump, and he spoke even more. He became presidential all of a sudden, it seemed. Could all the negative rhetoric be over, and what can we expect under a Trump presidency? Well, I mean, if you look back over, I would say, probably the last two weeks or so, we have seen a change in Donald Trump. He's he's toned down a lot of his rhetoric. He's, he's looked more at the teleprompters and giving his speeches. He's become more calm on stage. And that's really what we saw during his acceptance speech last night. Now, when it comes to the future there, as Francois Hollande said, the president of France, there's some uncertainty there. We saw that with the markets overnight, with the future markets taking a huge 900 point dive overnight in the, the middle hours there before coming up and before trading opened and now moving on an upward swing. There are a lot of questions about what Donald Trump's administration will do in terms of policy. He said many things during the campaign in terms of repealing the Obamacare, mm -hmm. looking at the Iran deal, looking at the TPP, uh, looking at immigration reform. So in the coming days during this transition period between now and January, uh, we hope to hear what the Trump administration plans to do and what his plans for his first 100 days are and throughout his administration will be. Uh, Steve, I have to quickly put this in. Is it significant that uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, was one of the first people to congratulate, one of the first world leaders to congratulate Trump on his win? I don't know if it was really significant. I mean, shortly after the election was called in favor of Mr. Trump, world leaders started congratulating him around the clock. They're still doing so this morning. Uh, so I'm not really sure that there's too much to read into that.